there, everyone. I'm Mr. Muckle Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign, MTNO, The Last of Europe, in which we are playing as everyone's favorite Republic of Zlatoust. But if you'd like to read about them, please go right ahead. Now, I've never played this nation before, at least at the time of this recording. But I'm very interested in seeing what they can do. And, of course, we're led by the Mr. Dragunov, and we've become the richest fiefdom in Russia, often empire blood money. Sway regional conflicts with their endless streams of arms. Defend your loot from regional rivals to the death. I love firearms, but the speculation and accumulation. Russia is a harsh, harsh place. Warlords rise and fall. Governments come into power, in which get overthrown within the same day. And the common Russian starving in a hut on a piece of land controlled by a nameless warlord. Despite these unfortunate events, our arms industry has been consistently thriving. Our arms industry, of course, with the people flocking to our nation in droves to work and serve the Republic, we churn out cheap, reliable designs constantly, and our business is always in the black no matter what occurs. Our Republic... It's a light in the darkness of the Siberian wastes. And as long as our citizens and our businesses proper, pr prosper, the Republic will, of course, pr prosper as well. One of the most important aspects of running a successful business is, however, a plan. And with the tides west churning ominously, our best course of action is re to review our said plan for it and see what we need to improve to fulfill the needs of our citizens and customers. Stock up. Ooh, for you to get better infantry equipment. Or can make it faster, I should really say. Uh, I think it's okay. Sell off our stock. Gain loot. Which loot actually does have a good purpose here. Um, the front lines. I kind of don't mind stocking up first. With so many battles and wars being waged all around us, we have co constant orders of rivals, anti-tank guns, or anti-aircraft guns, rockets, shells, and ammo, and munitions to keep track of. While these operations have been unprecedented, unprecedentedly successful, some cracks have unfortunately begun to gleam in the foundations of our industry. The continuous flow of orders has grown difficult, and hundreds of workers and pieces of machinery have been lost on the assembly line. Sometimes because of exhaustion, and sometimes they just fall apart. As the strain continues to plague us, our production could come screeching to a halt, losing our claim to the Republic and any sense of prosperity we've built up for so long, constructing a stockpile of industrial materials and weaponry would make sure that we always have something to sell, while keeping ourselves supplies or supplied if our rivals decide to meet us on the front lines, which will happen eventually. So, what I love what the devs have done here is that we can actually go ahead and, like, raid and loot, of course, and raid, but we can actually have expenditure opportunities. With the prosperity and profit we've achieved in the wake of the tumultuous era, the consuls and the administration over the city of Zlatos have begun to look over the possibilities of utilizing our great profits for the betterment of our citizens, sure. Some intentions lie on better optics garnering better sales, however. We must remember to retain our geniusness and humanity in these dark times and move to help our people. Expand industrial base, which is not bad. We get a factory. Invest or uh, invest in weapons development. Bonus blueprint. Get political power and stability. Not bad. Worker training. Industrial expertise. Education, facilities, agriculture. So, and also self-defense and external influence. While Zatels has managed to hold the wall of the Urals against German aggression and has managed to retain a sense of security against some of the moral mongers around us, we must acknowledge that threats still lie all around us. But Sean Kasayas... Free aviators may continue to defend the air from the Germans, but we must work to prepare ourselves for anything in the conflicts around us, so when it all falls apart, Zotos will be ready for anything. So we can do this stuff up here. So we have five options for society, and we also have one, two, three, four, five down here. Same thing. But we do these two, it's the same cost, but you get 2% stability, but you lose a bunch of political power and 5% war support. I don't want to lose any more war support, so it makes more sense to do these ones down here. So we'll go with equipment to begin with. Um, after stocking up, the merchant state is Zotos. The history of Russia is one of blood, defeat, and destruction. Now, even as the remnants of the motherland buy for scraps, millions live and die by the gun. How great! The West is the prime example. It's a sea of fire populated by warlords who place more value on dead ideologies than their own people, but there is hope. High atop the Ural sends Zatels, the last true bastion of freedom in old Russia. Beyond these desolate mountains lie dozens of factories spared, or spared from the Luftwaffe's reign of death. Petty bandits dare not risk scaling the Urals lest they encounter the Republic's death centuries. Refugees flock. Does let us by the hundreds, fleeing the wrath of madmen who swim like sharks around the mountain home, eager to rip it apart at any moment. Rumors speak of giant caves, filled to the brim with intact weaponry and heavy equipment, enough to give their own owner the edge against any force in Siberia. Unfortunately, there are also those who try to divide the root of Zlatov's unnatural prosperity. Indeed, for every bag of wheat and valuables traded into the mountains, there emerges trucks loaded with rifles heading towards the domain with bandits. Domain of bandits. Zlatov's is a paradise built atop of a mountain of corpses. Come, there's money to be made. Oh, yes, and... People we can raid. Um, your old military district would not be bad. Better as be guaranteed. Uh, honestly, I forget. When they begin, these guys are not that strong. They have no manpower. We could risk fighting these guys. Our divisions are actually not terrible either. So, and I know these are mountains. And raiding into mountains is a really bad idea. But we're full strength. They're not. If we do enough damage to them now, we should do okay. We'll see what happens. But dig in. 
We have no desire to reunify Siberia under our flag currently, let alone Russia. Our profits remain from conflict and are now staying out of said conflict by increasing patrols, constructing forts, and increasing the size of our military. We'll be able to protect the sovereignty of our shining republic from the various rabble rousers around us who want to loot our armories and plunder our wealth. Look at all that political power. We get one and a half every single day. Ugh, the Merchant of Death. I love the Merchant of Death so much. But yeah, not bad. We're going to make ourselves as strong as possible. We're going to make some civvies. And I thought I was going to make some millies eventually to... Actually, don't do that. Do this. Oh, it's millies. Yeah, millies. There you go. We'll do something like that. That's not too bad. But we got to stock up. What do we have for stockpile? We need anti tank. We need artillery. Infantry equipment. we got some motorized. We need some more support equipment. But it was another sleepless night. They had more frequently recently... Uh, they had been more frequent recently. Kalashnikov. <clears throat> Do not know why. On the surface, nothing had changed. He turned to Katarina, asleep in the bed beside him. She was safe. The children were safe. They were happy and healthy. And in times like these, that was more than most could dream of. He had provided for them once. That had been enough. But now, every time he closed his eyes, he saw flashes of muzzle fire and heard the thunderous reports of the guns that bore his name. He had been once so proud of the AK-47, and I, I definitely am. He still was on some days. It was truly a groundbreaking piece of weaponry, and he occasionally wondered what destructive muse must have been guiding his hands the day he drew up the first designs. Simple. Durable. Deadly. No one would guess that the farmer's son from Altai would create the most important gun in Russian history. Um, least of all himself, now here he was, a veteran of two world wars who became an arms dealer disguised as a politician. Profiting off a deceased and destroyed wasteland, he chuckled as he considered that he may be one of the luckiest men on earth. Yet the disquiet within him refused to pass. He thought back to that first day he had disassembled his father's hunting rifle. He'd been thinking about that day more and more. He hadn't even turned ten and already felt like his calling examining the gun. Studying the beautiful way each part interlocked with the rest, sometimes he wished he could push past the veil of time, grab that boy, and shout at him or warn him or plead with him to put the rifle away and never look back. He could have been a mechanic or an engineer. He could have used his talents to design any number of other contraptions. Who would have thought a fascination with firing mechanisms would lead him where, where, lead him where it had? He was still proud of his legacy, but he increasingly wished he did not have it. Ekaterina murmured something in her sleep. He let out a long sigh and laid back in bed, staring at the ceiling. He did not sleep for some time. We all must contend with what the choices of our past. The home front, because I want that stability pretty gosh darn quickly. The home front. Our citizens have better conditions than nearly any other Russian, bar in the Tsars and the West and East, but that isn't saying very much. While they are protected by anti-aircraft guns that we produce, they are still victims of the occasional raid. While they do not live in the basic huts and bombed out buildings that may any of our former countrymen reside in, they barely have any heat in the cold winter months. The Republic's efforts shall go to making sure that their constituents are happy, healthy, warm, well-fed, and protected. Oh, wait, we have to fill infantry equipment. Oh, how do we do this? Okay. Oh, crap. Okay, so we can't maybe make our own divisions. Okay. Uh, I don't know this is stuff here. Receive an order for our services from a nearby warlord. Payment for the orders will be delivered upon completing the orders. Failing to fulfill these orders will have temporary negative consequences. 4,000 infantry equipment will be delivered after we accept the contract. Oh, wait, oh, we gain. Oh, my gosh. We actually gain loot from them. Well, we can't fulfill everyone's request right now. Um. Uh. What do I invest in? We have three loots. Oh, did we get the loot from these guys? Maybe we didn't do it. Oh, whoops. Um. All right. Whoop, my bad. Well, I should have realized that we needed more stuff here, anyways. Um, artillery, you never know what they might want. So, if that's a case, go with a little bit more of this stuff and get definitely more guns. If we can. Um, my bad. I didn't realize it. Uh. So we had anti-air network? You might as well try that. Um. We need more stuff here. Oh boy. Scam for loot though, that'd be nice. So what's the negative penalties that we don't get? So now I kind of understand why this works, and sometimes it doesn't work. Order failed. 30 rifles is what we ordered, uh, Major General Major Council Dragunov. 30 rifles. It was a grave error of several incompetent chains in the command of the businesses here in the house, Mr. Utkin. They've been removed from our positions, and we may be continue our trans... No effing deal, Dragunov. We lost 12 men and 3 officers in the last band raid, and I can't even tell you how many people have been lost to starvation. You know why that is, Dragunov? Men can't fight an effing bandit war with using knives and fireplace pokers. Men can't bring down a Siberian and deer with their effing fists. Dragunov, we've been waiting for months for these weapons, and you're doing this in our wait. The men and women of Russia will hear about the effing business racket of the toast. Mr. Dragunov. Hello, hello? With a furious cry at the end of the call, the phone line was cut silent. Darn it, another lost customer. 
Mayor Council Yevgeny Dragunov threw his chair back as it hit the ground with a salt thud and ran over to the window of his office. Across the land, the Mayor Council looked over at his hard-working people toiling away in their businesses, earning a hefty profit from all the warring of the Russian lands. It was only by the good grace of God that they had not known of the four misshipments, starving the regime of necessary funds. Truly, the Taos would not be known as a golden mouth for much longer that should a solution not be found quickly by Mayor Council Dragunov. Grave times are ahead for the Merchant of Death. Uh, that's not good. Well, I can't do anything about this. We don't have all the guns. We're going to need more guns where we're headed. How does this get that much anti-tank? And oh, we gotta get planes. We gotta get stuff for ourselves too. So we're doing okay here. Like we need anti-tank. Whatever. Artillery. We need motorized. Maybe planes not so much, but still. Doesn't hurt our stability. Um. Everyone states get more building slots and infrastructure. Civian Millie. Guns for the men. Well, I can do this one probably. Guns for the men. The recent influx of new troops and mercenaries has led us to require more weapons to arm them. Our industry is struggling to keep up without sacrificing some of our other profitable production lines, diverting our industry. For the short term, at least, is the only solution we have. We will limit production of artillery rockets and tanks and shift them over to the AK 47M. Another plan the administration has drafted is a purchasing of older, outdated weaponry from the bandits and warlords looking to acquire some quick cash. It'll be quicker, but it may leave some of our newer recruits disadvantaged in terms of firepower. So we got some loot here, which is fine. Oh boy. Get some civvy stuff, I guess. Might as well. Build. The aviators of the Republic. Misha hurried, along with his friends, to the rocky overhang. Just as Novorosk that they used whenever they heard the drone that every Russian knew. The drone of German bombers. As they opted in as a coping mechanism, the friends wagered on what was likely to be attacked this time. The Republic had recently repaired the railway of Ninsi Tagil, Misha said, and they had to be the target. His friends disagreed, seeing that the ammo workshops in the suburbs damaged as they might already be, or the objective as it turned out, however, they would never know. Emerging from the clouds above the German formation, a collection of small black dots drove onto the bombers, and as the friends heard the unmistakable sounds of machine gun fire and realized what was happening, they cheered. The aviators were legends and avenging heroes that fought back not only against the Germans, but also against the hopelessness that felt whenever the drone was heard. As one of the bombers was rocked by an explosion, began to rapidly descend, its angle growing steeper by the second until it was almost perpendicular to the ground. When it struck the ground not far from the overhang, it was as if there had been a small earthquake when the bombers and the aviators had left. The group began running towards the crash and saw others, some with weapons, doing the same. German weapons and scraps were worth a lot to the Zatas Republic, who could easily sell them on, the, on to the warlords, and Misha intended to be the first one to find one. He hoped that the bombers could all perish in the crash, because if they had not, a very ugly scene was sure to follow. A pinprick, but it hurt them, and that's... something. Hmm. They lose political power, consumer goods, and stability. Nice. Well, we got two. Um, I guess equipment, maybe? Training? Yeah. They have all the equipment. Because when we get to more equipment. Because right now we're on power tools. We get more output, which is super, super important. 10% more output, which is really good. Guns for the men, just in case. And... I don't know. There's always a price. There's another civvy's nice and all. Another milli would be nice. You get connection. Mercenary state. Ooh. The purchase military access to, to our state. Guns like no other. Industry never ends. Uh, let's sell off our stock. The recent projects improve the living standards of our citizens have sapped our treasury, and it would be a good idea to look <clears throat> into the other forms of making money, other than selling our weapons to other nations. By selling our surplus weaponry to private security firms, we'll be able to boost our profits conventionally, while selling to more extraordinary clients will get us some off-the-books earnings as well. We'll get some improved infantry rifles, but we'll get some more stuff here too, so that's kind of okay. We're always out of guns. Why? You know what? Just anyway, just do that one anyway. Screw it. I want to raid. I miss the days of raiding like crazy. Oh, expand the industrial base. Yeah, we can do that one too. But we're still building, which is fine with us. Oh crap! Oh, we can get another one. Oh, we, oh, it just comes back. Okay, that's fine. So I won't probably do that one again in the future. Uh, training, cultural development wouldn't be bad either. Yeah, agriculture would be nice. Yeah, probably agriculture. So, stocking up. I'm glad we got this one immediately, but still. Yeah, not great. So we have Dragunov, Mak Makarov, Konstantinov, and Ivanikov. Everyone ends with a vvv. And no one wants to raid us, so I'm, I'm a little displeased with that. A little displeased. Double our portfolio. 
The industry of the Republic is already thriving with guns and tanks being made in the dozens every day. However, the Republic never seems satisfied with our profits and recognizing the dissatisfaction from our people. And in order to bolster our coffers, we should begin to seek further improvements of the current production methods. By investing a large amount of money to build new factories, procuring new production equipment, and hire new workers, we'll be able to exponentially grow the production capacity of the Republic. Our people will soon know a new age of prosperity and happiness, and this is just a start of our plans. You go? I'll do you go first. I'll do both. So now I got even more equipment. Nice. Uh, how, many, how much do we have? We have two. Not bad. Because even though that, this would be too bad to do, at least an industrial base, you get more cap retention in game, which is okay. It's not super important. I prefer agriculture for now, too. Just because we're on basic mechanization. You get more output, you get more consumer goods, you get better division training time, monthly population. Yeah, just overall that's really good as well. So, sell off the stock, double our portfolio, and then guns for the factories because we want to definitely get those military factories out as fast as possible. Um, yeah, nothing really here I really want to develop yet. What do we do with this political power? I wish we had more stuff we could do with the political power, man. You, be offensive. Keep researching stuff, man. Let's get another loot, though. That's pretty nice. Getting more millets would be very good, too. Nice. What do we have here? Don't really want to lose war support, but equipment as fast as possible. Oh, I'll do that one. Why not? We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it eventually. Like we, we'll probably run out of war support completely, but whatever. Guns for factories. We have many contacts around the world who also would like to see the Republic's business endeavors prove successful. One part of the Republic's new initiative is to increase uh, goods production production, and living conditions for assistance is to procure new equipment for our factories. By reaching out to fellow warlords, emigres, <clears throat> and foreign agents, the Republic will be able to secure new machines and ammo to increase our production. It will also increase our output capacity by leaps and bounds, which in turn will increase our profits by an even larger amount. Yes. Yes. So these are the divisions that we're using. So we have these guys that are 16 combat with, not bad, not bad, could be better, but not, not too bad, honestly, at all. We have these guys, which are 13 combat with, but they are elite infantry, so they're slightly costlier, but they do have three support companies on them already, an artillery, engineers, recon. Well, these guys do not have engineers, which is a big no-no. A slightly bigger combat with, but I'd rather have the engineers. Engineers are super, 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 super important. Muy importante, as some might say. Yeah, I... I don't want to beat some people up, but we gotta wait for Hitler to die. Hitler, please die. Ah, uh, TNO. I've played almost every single nation that at least has a unique focus tree once, I think. Except for this guy down here. This guy, I'm at the time of recording, I'm not ready to do this at all. I'd have to know a very, very good guy to do this. So. Guns for factories. Industry never ends. Yeah, I want more industry. It's always a price. Uh, you get two more factories. You know what? Maybe okay. So here's the idea. So we have only so much space to build in. Let's build up this up as fast as much as much as possible first, and then when we run out of space, then they'll throw in more factories in here. Hopefully, that might, I might be wrong about that, but so there's always a price. As a beacon of capitalist spirit in Siberia, numerous corporations run weapons factories without state uh, state owned manufacturers making the advanced weapons being the backbone of our economy. We normally let most companies proceed without intervention, but this time something has gone wrong. One of our T-55 factories has fallen silent, as most warlords can't afford to use armor. Hundreds are out of work, but the government has a solution. We'll buy the factory, retool it to make it more profitable, and restore the jobs of the men and women who have been out of work. Yes. Oh, crap. Artillery and... Oh, crap. Uh, team men? Who do, who do we want to win? I kind of want to see if we could win. Maybe. Team men, Bashkiria? Uh, v I want to see Vyatka win. Let's get Vyatka going. Vyatka. And... Let's go with Bashkiria. There you go. Man, we have... Seven loot! Jesus Christ, that's so good! Oh my goodness, I love this! Um, let's go with worker training, let's go with education. That's fine for now. More anti- I don't think we really need that, but it's okay, we're gonna hold on to it anyways. I'm sorry, we couldn't fulfill your orders. Oh my gosh, that's so bad. And we need army XP anyways, but still. Oh, we have six divisions, look at that, nice. Uh, we'll just keep making that division for now, let's see what happens. Poggy? Poggers. Coup in the government, yes please. We're the only ones selling guns. Severian Mediator. The Bullish Charge. Holy crap, 20 more... Warsport, wow. 
Send volunteers to West Siberia. Or to fail down what I don't care. I don't care. We can actually send volunteers. It's not bad. Fortify the house. Dynamic revolution. Replace and restore. Uh, free to stay. Guns like no other. Out of our pockets. That's not bad either. Industry like no other. That's not bad either. Um, after this one, well, there's always a price, and then we're, we're the only ones selling guns, which is nice. Guns for factories! We failed. Oh, no. Oh, whatever will we do. We'll keep winning. Uh, research. Oh, I should do an agriculture, but that's fine, whatever. There's always a price. Yes, please. We're the only ones selling guns. The Republic has been blessed with a vast amount of wood, steel, and technical know-how, which allowed us to start our massive arms industry, which I do apologize for this. I gotta go ahead and switch this over. Uh, thank you. That's fine for now. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> the Luftwaffe rarely flies over our country due to our vast anti-air defenses and the presence of the free aviators nearby. This has allowed us to consolidate our position in these dangerous wastes. Furthermore, our security has allowed us to gain a monopoly on the arms industry against all of our neighbors, as each and every single one of them know that only we can produce high-quality weapons in a massive quantity. Our reputation of cheap, rugged, and effective equipment draws buyers from all across Russia. We've consolidated our position, and it's about time that we start to review our processes. We'll take our profits and work on developing new rifles, tanks, and artillery pieces to enhance our portfolio, and improve our industrial methods so we can make our weapons faster and cheaper than anyone else can. Yes, please. Nice, and now we have no loot. Dang it. Darn it. Eh, yeah, guns are looking pretty bad, but whatever. We'll get there. But Gary starts with them. What are you doing here? So slow. Oh, these guys are killing each other. I want to raid. Wait, what? Wait, what? Why'd you cancel the non-aggression pact? Just because we didn't sell you anything? Come on, man. We're trying the best we can. Production cost, equipment cost for infantry equipment is looking very nice. Well, it's anti tank. I want to beat these guys up so bad. I can kill that division off. Please, please, please. Alright, so after that one, expanding the sprawl wouldn't be too bad. Fortify the front lines. That was just one. Siberia is a brutal region. Only the strong survive, and only those who forge the tools for the strong will prosper. The free cities, city of Zatos is surrounded by bandits, mercenaries, and revolutionary fools who think egos and militias believe that they have the right to call themselves a nation. In this dangerous position, we have managed to secure several advantages. However, the Ugrin thugs and bandits to the north offer extremely lucrative profits, while the juntas and dictatorships surrounding us are some of the most loyal customers. While we have a secured a stable position, it's time that the Republic reorganizes its operations and renegotiates some of the dealings with our partners to keep customers coming, safe and safe, and profits soaring after all. Coming for the money and finding the marauders would look bad, wouldn't it? Nice. So we should be done with this one. Almost. There you go. Scams for loot. Oh, we are always scams for loot. Why can't we raid? I just want to raid, man. I just want to embrace my inner warlord. 99% stability. Not bad. Um, honestly, probably get rid of that one for now. Just because, uh, well, we're going to be expanding uh, how big some of these divisions are at very soon, so. Yeah, it wouldn't be bad. Uh, not a big focus, too, but that's okay. Our Shining Republic, huh? That's a lot of stability and uh, political power. Oh, crap. What do you guys want from me? Samata? Let's go, Komi. I'm going, Komi. Yep. Have to. Front lines. Oh, look at that. We have Dos Lutos. How fast can we get this going up? That's not bad at all. The Yuga Connection Flexor Muscle. Expanding the Sprawl. It's not bad. Zatalus and Ninsi Dagil are the most popular cities and are among the biggest power production centers in all of Russia. The Republic has already invested a great amount in our industry. It's now time to focus on the Republic's most important assets, our citizens. We'll invest further money into the well-being of our citizens by building new apartments and suburbs around our main industrial centers, and we'll also construct new factories making both weapons and consumer goods for export and our citizens and our citizens' enjoyment. Two, huh? As much as I want to do that one, just I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll do. We'll do that one next. Maybe five, two. Everything's going up slowly, 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 slowly. Stocking up. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, producing infantry equipment even slower. Well, you know, like eight point one's not bad. That's actually really good. It's actually very good. Cool. The front lines, my friends. They do be calling. 
So this, I'm going to assume this is like the only focus tree we do have here. So we'll see what happens with these guys. So expanding the sprawl, yes please. Everyone state gets more building slots, yes please. Ugrin defense, flex your muscles, Ugrin connection. The Republic has always had a good relationship with the Ugrins, but lately, with the bandit raids and their mobs of brigands that have been crossing their border into ours, we've hit a rough patch. Seeing the Republic's best diplomats will be a great way to reform our good intentions and will hopefully allow us to discuss a new treaty. This proposed Cordon Corda would establish a mutual alliance between the Republic and the Ugrins, along with several economically beneficial, beneficent clauses and a signature of mutual defense. We need as many friends as we can get in this harsh world, and the Ugrins are our best bet. So these guys, not bad. Artie, we're gonna get enough Artie eventually. Go with elites. Make these guys 20 combo, but they are elites, so there you go. So now we're really out of equipment, which is really bad, but whatever. I just wanna make sure whenever we do get attacked that our soldiers will be fine. We get attacked, we can repel enemies. That's a lot of loss. <laughs> Look at that. Up, 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 down. Scoot, scoot, no, loot. Good. Looking not too bad, not too bad. I like Satas. Satas is a nice nation to play as. Muy bueno, I will say. Expanding the sprawl, Ugrin defenses, yes. Sense of security. Well, yeah, we'll do this one for so. They are our best bet. <clears throat> oh, so you did build it, okay. Cancel. Um. Maybe we'll do this one eventually, but we'll see. A mercenary state. The Siberian Mediator, why not? The Republic is well loved throughout Russia. Though this is more co more comes out of your business dealings than when a genuine alliance. We are a neutral nation, and unlike the front, the Tsar are our neighbors to our east. The Republic has no desire to unify Russia. Our neutrality puts us in a unique position. By establishing offices and departments which communicate with other warlords, we can keep them from completely annihilating one another unnecessarily. This reorganization will also help business because, if we allow these mediations to happen here, we can skim the top... Uh, of these deals for our pleasantries as a host. That's also very true. Keep going for land auction, though. We're going to need the best defenses. The best defenses. God, I just... I wish we could raid. I want to raid so bad. I just want to beat the crap out of our enemies so badly. Six, not bad. Not bad, though. Not bad. Siberian Mediator. Very nice. Very, very nice. Oh, Kaya elected president, uh, prime minister of Japan. Thuan Thramurang Nasawasat appointed prime minister of Thailand. How do you have such a long name, man? It's incredibly long. The all Russian contractor. Not bad. Uh, the Ugrin defense, I guess. <clears throat> well, that's our neighbors. Uh, the Ugrins have a common interest. We both seek to survive in the rough waters of western Siberia. And we both want to fulfill our interests without meddling from the other warlords with more conventional power. We'll send one of the best diplomats in the Republic to see if we can write an agreement of mutual defense, so both of our nations will be able to continue on our path with a sense of security. Ugrin bandits accept. The roar of truck engines silenced the bird song. A parade of guns was spotted on the horizon. <clears throat> Jabba emerged from his bunker. Wearing a greased tank top and shorts, the merchants had caught his entire camp off guard, but before the bandits could scramble to their nests in the bushes, the Tau's finest entered the clearing. Two dozen men emerged armed with modern assault rifles and sporting gas masks never before seen in Siberia. We've come to see Comrade Jabba, uh, yelled one of the soldiers as he flung his gun over his shoulder. I'm Jabba. The bandit shoved his foot pads aside as he made his way through the mud. The meeting wasn't supposed to happen until next week, but Jabba found himself worried for the first time in many months. This base is supposed to be secret. How did the heck did the merchants know about it? If they wanted to, they could have kit. So the Taos extends his apologies, comrade, mocked the head merchant. But we have a deal, and my associates would like it to progress immediately. Troops emerge from the back of the front truck, carrying crates decorated with the symbol of death, Mr. Iziliani. Here we have 200 units of Kalashnikovs, 150 gr grenades, and the last five trucks are yours. Jabba looked at the end of the caravan, a hungry fire burned in his eye. He raised his hand, and a pack of mules emerged from his foliage. Loaded with sacks of grain, the head merchant raised his eyebrows and stared at the animals, and then drew a heavy breath and looked back at Jabba. The man from Zotaos eyes Jabba and his compatriots as they handed off the grain. Now, in order to secure trust in the dealings between the Republic and the Ugrins, we must understand a level of complete trust. We would like the rest, please, the merchant said. Jabba turned around and looked at the beaming sun rays bouncing off the hidden car er, mirror as he motioned it forward. The truck roared and traded through the snowy trail, and just after a few minutes, Zatel's caravan was off, riding off in the shadow of a distant mountain. They have chosen quite 
wisely. Diplomatic initiatives. The details. Sir, I'm pleased to announce that our border dispute with uh, blank clique has ceased this morning. Scouts report that all hostile units have vacated blank blank. Our soldiers have done the same, except for our sharpshooter team at point blank hill. My messenger tells me that your illness has passed, so I believe it is time for me to relate to you the full story. As you know, blank, clique, had intruded upon her pastures last month, resulting in 15 skirmishes between her forces and the loss of 62 uh, brave men. Despite early promise, enemy onslaught slowed down our... Uh, Slow down near Point Blank Hill just last week ago. Where casualty spike. The resolution originated with one Blank Blank, who had arrived at our four outposts in a model Blank Blank, and claimed to be a representative of Zotel's. He offered to mediate the dispute in exchange for Blank bags of wheat. With Conrad Blank's permission, I accepted and was later informed that the Blank clique had been visited by the same man. He set up a meeting between our parties three days ago where he agreed to secede a quarter of the milk yielded by cows grazing on the contested pasture. It is my firm belief that further cooperation with Zatels is preferable to continue border conflicts with our neighbors. Their representative was cool, charismatic, and well-disciplined. We have confirmed reports of similar dealings happening with Conrad Blank's band, who also attested to Zatels' capacity as a mediator. I suggest we set up communications with the merchants immediately. Guns are not the only things Zatels offers, as we are doing the Ugrin defense still. Of course, naturally. Uh, so if you want to reread that, re -read that again for whatever reason, please go right ahead. Uh, we don't need more political power. Oh boy, can we see so... Yeah, we can't do anything here. We need more anti-tank, which sucks. But, oh well. The Bullish Charge. A mercenary state. Would not be bad. Uh, more war sport would be pretty decent to get, though. But, flex our muscles. Some of our neighbors have been getting a bit bold with us. Payments are being delayed. The raids on the border seem to be getting more and more infrequent, and petty bandit gangs attempt to steal whatever weapons and ammo they can from our stockpiles. The Republic needs to show these around it that we are not some warlord. We are a proud Republic that is one of the few safe places in the harsh region. The Republic is a talus, is not to be trifled with. And we will keep our people safe and in a bottom line intact no matter the cost. Good. Good, good, good. How much do you think do we have? 185 is not bad. But we definitely won't have enough here. If we had to do anything, I'd probably do Tartar Stem? Yep, yeah, something different. Yeah, why not? Ah, uh, let them kill each other off. Business is good. As long as we have enough equipment ourselves. Um, yeah, nothing else here, really. So if we expand the anti air stuff, whatever. Oh, no, we f failed to fulfill it. So I, now I see why, like, we can't always f f fulfill all orders, which sucks. It really does suck. Which one are we doing? Flexion muscles. Oh, you guys decline. It appears that our old friends and you do not care much for uh, safety. Despite being offered some of the finest weapons on the market, the bandits prefer independence to survival. Yaba Izoyani has committed a foolish error that will haunt him for years to come, but we will find other assets. This is the responsibility of suffering in old Russia. Control the roads. The Luftwaffe bombings, while very limited in our area due to our thriving anti-aircraft anti gun factory, still hit our roads, especially in our borderlands. Our roads and infrastructure is our most important aspect, and we need to rebuild what is destroyed and repay what has been worn down. To rebuild these roads, however, we will need new money. When, uh, one of our supplementary sources of revenue we can use for rebuilding is our toll systems across the country. However, with citizens seizing control of the toll stations or bandits raiding them for money, they have become defunct in recent years, sending. Uh, and the police forces will guarantee the safety of our roads while securing the funds the Republic needs from each and every traveler passing through. In the end, this protection will finally allow us to guarantee our deliveries as made, uh, our deliveries are rightfully made and properly made. Oh my goodness, I butchered that so badly. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. More output. More output. Anyone want guns? We got plenty of guns. Hope we have enough divisions. We don't have enough manpower, though. Well, I thought we were getting like immigrants, and we could convert them to join us and stuff like that, but maybe not. Oh, now we get... Something. Oh, Hitler's gone. Goodbye, Hitler. Ukta. Call me. Or both. I'm fine with that, too. Equipment. Uh, purchase Yugo protection? Let's see what happens with those guys. Will they accept? Probably not. Equipment. The Yugra deal. Furthermore, according to the stipulation to the Zlatalis Yugra pact, both parties must be prepared to involve themselves in each other's defensive co conflicts. Failure to accept a call for assistance will result in an immediate dissolution of the pact and a severing of all communications between the two parties. Jabba Izoyani agrees to be present for all pact meetings and blank, I'll sign blank. See Article 4, Section 1 for details regarding the exchange of military equipment between both parties. Abstract. The state of Yugra and the Republic of Zlatalis agree to mutual cooperation of the areas of small arms manufacturing, the exchange of military and economic advisors, and the interests of the pact. 
Jabba Zuliani agreed to the continuation of the blank deal, pertaining to the free movement and garrisoning of Republican units in Ukraine territories, signed blank. The Republic of Zatas agreed to the monthly allowance of blank units of blank and blank units of blank 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 to the state of Ugra. Zatas agreed to protect the borders of Ugra against all hostile entities listed on page 42 within the bounds of the pact. Zatas also agreed to provide a safe haven to all members of the Ukraine government and general staff in the event of the latter's, latter's capitulation during war, signed Yevgeny Dragunov. Sign, 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 sign. And then we shall control the roads, my friends. Yeah, screw it. We'll probably just get the factories done as fast as possible now. You gotta flex some muscle, though. Nice. This look up is awesome, too. The bombing stop. If you're worried about that, please go right ahead. A little bit of lag, that's okay. This is for other warlords to purchase military access to our state. Oh, we can do that. Wouldn't be too bad. The industry never stops. And it's going to do that one. The Republic is booming. Profit margins are going up. Equipment is being produced at record rates. And our citizens are happier and healthier than ever. But we can make some more improvements. The Republic has vast stretches of land untouched by the hands of industry. And a way to further increase our profits is to start zoning off the land so we can construct industrial parks for the Republic. This creates additional jobs in terms of those who want clearing the land and those who are working the factories. Allowing the Republic's citizens to secure a livelihood. It's a win-win. As everyone's killing each other off again. We love it. Chill you, Bins. Come huh? Domino shall stop. Anybody want to buy guns? How many? How much here do we have? We have one, and none. Okay. Interesting. I mean, I guess we can build somewhat normally. Ten is not bad though. Get another milli would be really nice for guns, perhaps. Yeah, keep making more guns because people can always use more guns, right? They can always use more guns. We can use more guns. This is where you're, where you're at. So after this one, we're probably gonna go down here. Yeah, and get down to at least here to here to here. Because that'll be all the immediate buffs to actually fighting and stuff. So we've gone through quite a few focuses here already, which is very nice. A pay to pass, pretty much. So Tomsk is doing pretty well over here. Magadan's not doing too badly either. Um, Germany's a mess, but it's a civil war. Austin's a mess, but it's a civil war too. Oh, nigga, do you need folks for you, nigga? Yeah, you do. I should play Zonega sometimes. Someone did ask me to play it, so we'll see. Maybe we will. It is an obligation. Huh. Cool. Control them roads, son. Alright, uh, which one are we doing next? Oh, yeah. And she never stops. Or ends. Dynamic revolution? Hmm. Not bad. Replace some stuff. What if I was a toast? A mercenary state. Why not? A merc state. Our glorious Republic must have a small but highly trained and exceptionally well equipped army. However, with the deterioration of the situation in the West, and with many warlords wanting to expand and even unify Russia, we need to increase our defensive capabilities. We have a limited manpower pool, so hiring mercenaries, uh, specifically from Yugo, wouldn't be a bad idea. By spending some coin to hire, equip, and build, and house a group of mercenaries, we'll keep our men out of combat unnecessarily and have an expendable force to police our borders and attack any bandits that try to steal from our stockpiles. The Aryan Brotherhood has to be so bold to try to st attack us. It's fine. We'll lose a slight bit of manpower. We actually have a little bit of manpower. Look at that. Um, but that's okay. More guns from them, yes. When they're defeated, decaying, decrepit bodies will be very nice. Give us some army XP, my son. Oh, and you're, you're fighting into the mountains with militia. Ah, uh, that's what we like to see. We killed off a third of them all. Nice, look at that. Beautiful. Uh, who's this? Samara, Tumen, Komi. I don't want to push him so hard for Komi. I want Komi to win, though, as you can tell. Canal rights? Nice. Kalashnikov's doing a great job. Come back, Kalashnikov. There, you can have this guy for now. I'm not sure if we'll need ambush him. Maybe we will, but we'll see. Yeah, we don't have a lot of anti tank, do we? Order failed. Oh no! Oh well! We actually should have enough anti tank very soon. There we go. When we do these, we get what? Just one? Monies? Uh, equipment up here wouldn't be too bad. We we'll begin to improve. Begin to slowly. So he gets one over here, you get two up here. Um, I don't want to I, I don't want to lower our war sport. Like, I really don't, so. I'd rather take it a little, slightly longer, maybe. 
Maybe. Oh, call me. No. Industry never ends. Mark state? Yes, please. Do we, do we really not have a thousand yet? Ah, uh, we're not going to have a thousand for a while. Alright, pay to pass. The Republic is a light in the darkness of Russia, and we offer what many warlords cannot around. Uh, stability, safety, prosperity, and liberty. By showing those who surround us with the benefits that we offer, we can increase immigration. This should be a priority as more immigrants mean more workers, soldiers, scientists, and people to boost their population. The Republic needs to grow, and the more of our brethren that come in, the more we can grow and flourish in this wasteland. Propaganda leaflets and signs along our most traveled railways or roadways would help us convince travelers to stay in Zatals and contribute their skills to the Republic. Yes. At eight, not good enough yet. But we're getting there. Oh, what's over here? Ah, yes, more loot. Yes, please. Coffee? Ah, yes. Yes, 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 please. Merzniki. I mean, if we can get more war sport, I would do this stuff, but, like, I don't want to lose war sport. Can't do agriculture either, huh? Political power does not really do anything for us either. Um, I want to wait, maybe get the mercenary state one done first, and then maybe we'll spend some stuff? Maybe? Cool. And then pay to pass, of course. Mmm, pretty good hot coffee. Pretty tasty. Pretty darn tasty. Come on, someone raid us. Oh, here we go. There you go. Nice. And now we have three loots. Hire mercenary infantry brigades. Yes. Free to stay. Zatas is one of the most advanced and well-kept infrastructure programs and systems in all of Russia. We are a major transport hub of goods and people between the various warlords, and a good way to make, take advantage of our situation would be to open up our roads to other states. For a price, of course, by allowing our neighbors to pay to pass through our area, we can have a source of constant, lucrative income for as long as trade continues, and perhaps entice some people to stay, which is super, super important. So that'd be good, and we got uh, we don't have a ton more focuses to do, but that's alright. Oh, hire mercenary motorized brigade. Okay, I'm not opposed to that. We could try that, why not? How much going do we have? We need 529. Uh, we're all pretty low on a lot of stuff here. We do have some fighters though, which is nice. Oh yes, anti-tank guy, dang it. Well, that's why we're doing all this industry stuff as well, because we want more output. 5% is not bad. Over here, 10% is pretty good. 10%, 10%, 15% would have been better, but let's go to this one. That one's not ahead of time though, right? No, it's 60, so. yeah, that's fine. I wish we had more stuff to do with our political power, though, like bribing people, having people to buy stuff from us. That would be kind of nice, honestly. Oh, and anti tank. Why does everyone want so much anti tank? I get it, it's important, but buy our guns, god dang it. Free to stay, guns like no other, stay out of our pockets. Industry like no other, so we need. Yeah, I basically need. Two, three, and one of these. So we'll do free to stay, and then do these two, and then gonna do that one. Getting more stability would be nice, but that's all right. Not immediately necessary yet. Um, something else opened up here, huh? Free to pass, nice. Free to stay. Holy crap! Holy crap! What just happened here? Paperwork, paperwork, paperwork! The mayor council should have expected this level of administrative work when dealing with the unexpected rulership over an entire settlement all those years ago. But its pros and cons so managed to touch the soul of the former Soviet officer. Sure, running the show in a line of profit means that you get to be the king of the riches at the end of the day, but that much was to be sure. But all this darn paperwork? The days of yesteryear were organizing and handing out weaponry alongside physical handiwork required to make sure that each firearm was of the highest quality was a stuff of dreams for the man, as he stared through the window to the falling snow. Mayor Consul Dragunov, sir, one of the neighbor states, you've issued a diplomatic resolution to your officer, the young secretary said. Curious. The states surrounding the city of the Zatals have not been all uh, too kindly towards its existence, seeking to consume the profits that so greatly throw, flowed through the state. Whatever could they want through, uh, through diplomacy now? To the Mayor Consul of the city of Zatals, it is greatly understood that not all within Russia are so eager to shake hands in order to achieve their goals, willing to leave nothing left to rule over. Once they've made the conquest, and recognizing the great economic stature of a regime, it is humbly that... Uh, Ask that the people of our great state may be granted access into your state, allowing for healthy levels of profit through mutual cooperation. Our city, our profits, no deal? Yes. Sure, everybody. Y'all can come on in. You, though, rifle unit alpha. It's not terrible, actually. Thank you for joining us. You're never going to go home. Here we go. 
Mr. Me motorized? We'll try it. Whoa! Oh my gosh! 31 Luterinos! Oh, okay then. Oh, we're gonna do one. Darn it. Oh, fifth. Holy. You know what? That's okay. Okay, giving everyone access is probably a really, really, really bad idea. But that's so much Luterino. Holy crud of daddies. Holy fathers. Wow. We still have 14 loots. We need more arty. We need more guns. We need a lot of things, but Jesus. Um, the bullish charge? Why not? Our shining republic is the only government of its kind in western Siberia. We are surrounded by authoritarian governments, five terms, and squabbling military men. A way for us to increase our immigration and turn our workforce is to distribute, uh... Uh... Blah, 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 distribute leaflets and form other pro-government media to assistance in the surrounding population. So they can see how and why we are a more wealthy, stable, and prosperous option in this cold and harsh world. Uh, everyone about that one good head? So 14 jumps up to what? Nothing? Yeah, we're 16. Alright. No one wants to buy guns, huh? We have a, 1,100 guns, so if that's the case, let me go to artillery and anti-tank, maybe? We manage slightly more. We're still trying to expand up the cap anyway, so it's kind of fine with us. Nice. 15, 0, nice. Wow, we got rid of all that stuff down there. That sucks. It's alright, though. Motorized Rifle Brigade. Not bad, not bad. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. Having eight divisions is very good as well. Should play these guys again. Mountain Haven. The fly landed on a strained window, a lone source of light on the brutal Siberian winter, named Sergei Petrovich. It scrambled through a tiny hole in the wall, emerging inside a small room just at home to two men, a table, and a lamp. Where are you from? Orsk fled six days ago. Anyone with you? Uh, Ivana, my daughter, she's outside. Attracted by the weak light bulb, the fly flew forwards, forwards, landing on a lampshade. What, what was, uh, 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 sir, pardon, ask me for asking, but has a short blonde woman of about 40 come through here? Sir, we got a lot of newcomers lately. What, what, please, sir, her name was Irina. She was my wife, you see, but what was your occupation, please? The fly made its way to the center of the lamp, its frozen little legs barely shifting. I, I was a teacher in mathematics. Listen, she was supposed to meet me at this entrance post, but I couldn't find her. Please, sir, we came from Orsk only a while ago. She could be anywhere. I'm sorry, but if I see her, I will inform you. We have a hundred people here coming from just about everywhere. But, but she said she would meet me here. We, you were clear. Get your daughter and proceed to the house. Every paradise has a cave with skeletons. And a lot of skeletons of that. Surpassing, surpassing forecasts. Our Republic is rich, strong, and thriving. Every machination of war, from the Kalashnikovs to the RPG 7s to the T-64s, are being produced at a record rate and exported across the vast wastes of Russia. Our beacon of democracy provides a light in the darkness of this cold world. Now that we have secured the Republic's position in the short term, it is time to look within our borders and focus on making further improvements to our people's daily lives and our profit margins. Yes. Yes, please. Um, who is this from? Owen, ah, Dubashkiria. I was thinking of Berzniki. Oh, maybe you did Berzniki. Eh, whatever it is. I don't care. Doesn't matter. People all want all sorts of equipment and such. Actually, you are the one we got. 16 count with you guys, or what? 16 count with. Artillery and motorized, but. Engineers are not bad. Not bad at all. Anything else here? 20 Luterinos. My goodness. It's not bad. Uh, I wish I wish Zitz, Zitz was a unifier. I so wish they were a unifier. That would be so much fun if they were. Plenty of guns, though. Yeah, no one wants to buy now. Gods of the North, of course. So then again, when more nations get bigger and bigger and bigger, like they don't need to buy stuff. Wow. The WRF is looking pretty big. Zitz is finest. Comrades, hear to me. You are uh, the guardians of peace. Your strength, your will, your skill, these are the only things standing between our home and the terrible beyond. Uh, Selkov scooped down the lecture, making long and uneven lines as you struggle to keep the pain at bay. Zatas is forever indebted to your efforts, for the words of justice deserve the utmost respect. Yes, you will enter battle. Yes, you will lose your friends. Yes, 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 you will lose, uh, but the alternative is total destruction of everything we hold dear. Men, we are a society of free peoples. Many of you have already experienced the chaos outside the Urals, where the evil men slaughter each other for looting glory. For Lauted Glory finished Salkov, putting down his pencils, he tried to divine the meaning behind the words. 
define the meanings. You fight for peace, Salka. Remember that. Here, here. We are the last bastion of democracy and freedom. It is an honor to sacrifice one's life and limb for these privileges. The captain raised his hand to the ceiling, the veins of his red face bulging out. Some cadet in the back of the room chuckled. Who laughed? Barked the captain. Uh, was it you? Do you have no respect? The man fell silent as his eyes observed the incomprehensible scribbles upon the notebook in Salka's lap. Whilst he grabbed his arm, show me your right hand. Salka felt his heart sink. He pointed at it. A stump at the captain, who stood as if petrified, scrambling to conjure a response. Men, take note. The soldier here pointed at Salkov is trying to write with his left hand. Soldier, did you lose your hand in combat? Salkov nodded. The captain strolled back to the blackboard and continued. This man is determined. He does not need to fight. He could be discharged for disability, but he has honor. He has strength. He takes a class right before battle. With a single hand. The boy puts the rest of you dogs to shame. Take note. Take note. Be like him. The rest of the world is cruel. Many of you will die, but it's a good cause. Which is why you will fight on, even in the face of death. Selkov retrieved the pencil and continued writing, but felt a dozen eyes glancing at him. I sacrifice my hand for peace. I am a soldier, as I tell us. I fight for justice, as we surpass uh, forecasts. Yes, yes, yes. An industry like no other. The Research and Development Bureau is creating a new team to focus on the new field of computers and electronics, and how they can be applied to the Republic's industrial methods. To move our developments more, along more quickly, a new fund will be set up to invest heavily in the new universities and polytechnic schools throughout the Republic. The Dallas will have the greatest engineers and researchers in all of Russia, and our most serene Republic will serve further as a beacon of hope, democracy, and modernism in this grim, grim world. We don't really need this one, so... That would just be a waste. Here's that one, too. So now we're at six again. That's all right. Things happen. Things happen. Sixteen combo, huh? There you go. Because you guys are very good. Yeah. Merc infantry was this. Oh yeah, don't you, don't you worry about that one at all. It's fine. Oh, self defense and external stuff. Oh look at this. Some weapons of two men. There, you can have stuff. Oh, you guys both go for stuff. Two men versus arms. I want two. No, I don't want either one to win. But I think I'd go rather. Here. There you go. Do both. No, we have ten loot. Yay. Nice. Very good. Very, 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 very good. Oh, we're making some millies too. That's actually really nice as well. And then we'll build some infrastructure up. And then we'll build some nuclear reactors. No, not really. Radar stations would not, not be too bad either. Now we can scan for loot. 50% war sport's not bad. Out of pockets. Ooh, that's not bad. Yeah, we can do that one. We can use more war sport. The citizens of the Republic work day and night to fulfill the quotas that allow us to fill the coffers of our great nation. Our industry is booming, our roads are modernized, and our buildings are refurbished. It's now time to help the men, women, and children learn about more about this world around them, and learn about the history of the Russian people. The Raganov has allowed us to use our investments in the state to build new statues, schools, museums, and recreational centers for our people. The citizens of the Republic will no longer be painted as useless drones who only serve to manufacture weapons of war. We will let our society be known as one that balances business and pleasure. Nice. Because now we have only the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. More focuses? Oh, that sucks. I, I, I hope, I'm hoping for a second tree, but I don't think there are, there's a second tree, so. There you guys. Oh, honestly, it's looking pretty big. Um... Yeah, we're probably going to lose it pretty easily, because this is only planes. An ultimatum. Go ahead. Try it out. They must have been forced to attack. Holy crap, that was really fast. There you go. There we go, 17 or 18. 17 is still not bad. Must have made another melee, then. Get two there, too. That'd be nice. Very good. We'll have, like, some tanks, but I don't think we can really afford it right now. Not bad, not bad. Two men is dying. We could uh, we could have helped them out, but I don't really care. Guns like no others. Yeah, might as well. But once we get some more land auction done. We have the most advanced firearms, artillery, guns, rockets, and tanks in all of Russia. We should not dozens and dozens of munitions daily, but the Republic cannot afford to be complacent. Our mother, mayor council, Yevgeny Dragunov, and his partner, Mikhail Kalashnikov, are also heads of the State Design Bureau, and they are both responsible for creating the weapons that the Republic turns out daily. They have decided that it is now time to reactivate the Bureau and invest heavily in our R&D divisions so we can create new and improved weapons and methods of production. Oh, more mercs? Oh, yeah. Heck yeah, let's get more mercs. We got nothing else to do with our PP, so you must do that. There we go. Oh, we're out of... Darn it. 
Oh, wow. This guy's looking pretty big. But it's the Chunky, Chelyabinsk. Oh, did the early dick? No, no, Chelyabinsk is still there, huh? Alright, whatever. Nice. Get some, uh, let's get some more gun stuff, actually. Actually, we're doing really quite well in gun stuff. Oh, there goes those guys. Oh, wow. What happens down here might not be good for us. One, two, that's not bad. Guns like no other. And then Fort of Azitaus, just in case. Our Republic Shining Capital and Industrial Center are in a precarious position. While we are in the mountains, which is very defensible terrain, we border a significant amount of neighbors, and the best way to secure the safety and stability of the Republic is to build up defenses in and around the city. Mines, bunkers, pillboxes, and anti-tank guns will all be prepared to maintain and store citizens and workers and rest easy, knowing that they and their families are, of course, safe, 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 safe. Loot. Yes. And... Ruckers. Not much. But it's an honest division. Save that manpower because we're probably also going to need it. Where we're headed. So here we're at six. Not bad. Here are three. Eight. It's not too bad either. Poverty is nothing up in there. Equipment's going to go up by one more next month. So that should go up to 10. We should start at 10 for that one, which is not bad. No, I'll get more than I attack. That'd be good, too. And 65 will have it. And we'll have some more loot soon, too. Soon, too. The all-Russian contractor, just over... Just because of the Republic, doesn't seek to raise its flag over the Kremlin, doesn't mean that we cannot don't want to show our influence. Uh, in other ways, by offering our men in time to the petty band of kings and old Soviet generals surrounding us. We can gain extra funds and give our men, real men, men, real combat experience while exposing the Republic to any sort of conventional repercussions of war. Dynamic revolution. The Republic is surrounded by despots, commies, and authoritarians. The people are suffering under the boot of the oppressive regimes that rule over them. It is in the Republic's best interest to engage in covert operations to further democracy by arming insurgents in our neighbor's territory. We have a slight chance to weaken our neighbors and the internal strife that is created will open up new markets for the republic's weapons to be sold and used the republic stands for two things profits and democracy and these operations will make sure that both of these things are of course fulfilled nice it goes Dolvanga. um we're still trying to make ourselves really really good here because well you never know what's going to happen um we'll gain manpower no we don't want to gain manpower we want to actually yeah that's fine that's two um yeah, you should all be the exact same thing. Motorized mercenary stuff. Are we using this for anything? No, we can't get rid of it, which is weird. But okay, replace and restore. The Republic's urban centers are modern, but on the outskirts, there's a significant amount of dilapidated, unsafe buildings, and the infrastructure in many places that connect with cities and industrial parks are old and cracking. Using the money from investments into our domestic matter and profits, and our profits are on the tolls of the trade roads, the Republic will be able to repair its roads, and we'll be able to start a new program to refurbish and renovate our many housing projects. Not bad. And expand industrial base. We can just stuff down here, over there. Okay, and also looking pretty mighty. Not gonna lie, they're looking pretty big. But into the soldiers. Oh, yes. Our industry has been refurbished and expanded, and our citizens have one of the highest living standards in all of Russia. Our nation, of course, is thriving. Uh, <clears throat> but we have neglected one vital aspect of the Republic, the armed forces. By investing money into the new training programs, we'll be able to further reinforce our high standards, or high training standards, and make sure that our men are the best trained and equipped fighting force in all of Siberia. Get plus 25% more defense on core territory, and 15 more percent division organization, which is going to come in handy, because Amt is going to be a big old big boy, and it'll be probably really difficult to take out, which is kind of going to suck. But, you know, it is what it is. And hopefully get some air bases around here, too, because we got some fighters, we got some casts already, so... And we do have 10 divisions, which is nice. Not great. But pretty good. I'd say it's pretty decent. Decent. Um... I want more soft attack. Because we like it soft. That's artillery. We don't have enough for this, but it's okay. What else are we going to use army XP for? Nothing else, really. Or artillery. Because we're not really selling it anyways right now. So it kind of sucks, but whatever. Nice. Actually, that's the case. Oh, we don't even have... Oh, my God. We don't even have that level of artillery yet. God dang it. Just in case Omsk wants to attack us. 
and then into the defensive line. Using our vast profits, the Republic's defenses will be greatly expanded. New forts, anti-tank -gu guns, anti-air guns, bunkers, and tunnels will be erected and constructed along our borders. The Serene Republic of Zatels will, will be secure from any threats around us. If any desperate communist, Black League member, or German attempts to try to topple our Republic and harm our citizens, they will be met with fire, fury, and brimstone. Of the many people who live within our borders, which we get better division attrition, max planning, land for construction speed, anti-air construction speed, which looks really quite good. Strategic cycles, not bad. So all this other stuff is not bad. Um, I can mostly just kind of wait, though. I want to get some better engineers, because we're honestly probably going to need them. <laughs> uh, cultural weapons development. No one else wants to buy stuff. I mean, yeah, I get it. We're out of artillery, but still. Only 60-some pieces of artillery out, that's all. Mercenary infantry brigades. I do kind of like that one quite a bit, actually, honestly. I like that quite a bit. There's only militia, but we can convert them and make ourselves quite strong. I mean, I mean we're in planes here and such, but still. Uh, these guys are probably 7, 20 combo width. They're looking pretty good. These guys are four, maybe 40 combo width. Wow. Yeah. The AI sometimes likes to use 40 combo width, which is pretty strong. But our shining republic. Our coffers are lined with gold. Our systems are well fed, clothed, and have secure housing and modern amenities. Our factories turn out rifle after rifle, tank after tank, and artillery gun after artillery gun. The Republic's way of life, its democratic ideals, have been safeguarded from any potential threats. The Republic has built a lighthouse in the rough oceans of the Russian wastes, offering hope in the prospect of a new and better life for those who flock to its borders. We have built a new and better world, though through superior firepower. Political power, stability, more loot. Not bad. So when are you guys going to come kill us? You do have military access through us, but still. Uh, authority secured. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's right here. Sweep the rest. The old Republic crushed. Huh. I'm well, just kind of waiting for them to try to kill us, so. There you go. Let's try that. Kostnikov's not really good on attack, though. Let's wait and see what happens. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Just in case. Don't worry about that. Actually, go and get some of that, too. So, uh, do that one first, though. Because we do need an airbase. We do have a few lines of artillery here and there. Or just, you know, land forts and such like that. Uh, get some more artillery as well. Better artillery, I should really say. Go our production by a little bit. But if we lose here, then we lose, you know. We'll do the best we can. Sure, why not? How many divisions do they have, actually? We have 11. Do they have 20? They kind of like us, but... No, we should be about relatively equal. In terms of strength. Alright, so now they declare war on us. Oh, they're fighting these guys, too. Oh, that's nice, actually. Can we actually beat these guys up? That'd be kind of cool if we could. Not bad so far. Not bad. Almost 100 fighters. That's pretty good. Alright. Let's see what does it say. Volunteers to Yugra. Uh, Yugra, Yugra, probably not honest because they're killing us right now, so... Yeah, that probably wouldn't be very smart for us to do now, would it? Attacking us up there, so be it, so be it. Uh... Come back up here if you can. Take out Chilia Binsk if you can, too. Hey, we got your automotive plant, very nice. Oh, we left the capital completely open, which is probably not smart. Nice. Uh, oh, not bad so far. We still gotta be smart about this, though. Move into there and see what we can do. I wanna move you guys. Ooh, we have two divisions. Because it, uh, it depends on what these guys are gonna do. Are they gonna try and circle us as well? Oh, they're trying to leave. It's actually probably pretty smart by them. Go ahead. Go straight for uh, this direction. Nice. 
Very nice, actually. Oh, you don't need stuff. That's fine. You got a whole loot. We won! Victory for the Golden Republic! Some within the Russian nation would call themselves the sons of the Soviet Union. Uh, born to inherit Bukharin's throne of general secretaryship, past the era of warlords throughout Russia, such as Kaganovich's regime or the North Northward Front. Some would call themselves the protectors of Russian statehood or identity, maintaining dictatorships by gunpoint and threatening all who stand in the way of unification, such as Rokosovsky's ailing stratocracy or Wagner's insanity to our west. Some, meanwhile, only find themselves through a raging fever dream against a German such as Karabyshev's dark underlings in Omsk. However, we do not claim such vain fantasies over some authoritarian fantasy of uniting these lands, and though, through Mayor Council Dragunov's wisdom and guidance, the peoples of Latos have managed to secure our political and economic independence once more against the barbaric warriors threatening all around us. It was Mayor Council who managed to secure a path to prosperity, who allowed for man, woman, and child to find a newer and better life uh, than elsewhere in these frozen wastelands of Latos. Today, the gun manufacturer and the statesman join hand in hand, celebrating against those who would underdo all we've built. However, work is never finished in these matters, is it? With newfound territories under our control, it'll be our job to set up smaller puppet regimes who will be able to bend the will of the peoples of Zetaos, guaranteeing oh, look at that, a wall of safety against uh, any more threats. Furthermore, it is our duty to set up contracts with each of our new little puppets, allowing the private owners of Zetaos to find a new prosperous way to funnel profits through. Three cheers of Dragunov, three cheers of Zetaos. We shatter Western Siberia. First, we're now seeing the birth of new nations. Whoa, we've become the Euro Republic. Look at that. Sure, guys. Um, that's actually really cool. Vorkuta under Blochin. We have Republic of Nenetsia. Ivan Isovnin. Nothing there. We are ourselves the Euro Republic. And we also have Anton Antonovin Ovisenko. Huh. Basically, Svedlovsk, protector of two men. Boris Shershevina. And Omsk Reconstruction Authority under Viktor Grigorygev. I think that's pretty much it, though, for us. Uh, I don't think there's really much else here. That was a lot of... I can't believe we won that easily. Yeah, Zatas is not bad. But that's pretty much it for the focus tree, guys. A lot of fun. It was great. I really enjoyed them. Too bad it was only one episode, though. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow. And another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great rest of your day.